Hello, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to implement movement of elements on the screen in Code.org's App Lab programming environment. Uh, so first I'm going to show you the more naive approach that I've seen some students use that isn't ideal, and then I'm going to go over uh, how to do it the better way uh, that I would recommend, and I'll give you some example uh, code in order to get this uh, rolling in your own apps. So to start out, I'm going to go over the kind of way I've seen some students do this that I'm not super fond of, um, but it's sort of easier to do, but not as good as in terms of the end product. So I'm going to go to design view and just make a couple things. So I'm going to have a, a start button just so just because usually apps will have kind of a home screen and then you'll move on to a second screen. So I'll make a new, another screen. And on this one I'm just going to have uh, an image and that image will be, I have just happen to have this little rocket image uh, on my computer and I'll use this as the thing I'm going to move around the screen but of course everything that I do in this video will also apply to um, anything that you can change the position of in App Labs so like a, a button or a text label or any sort of image you want to use and lots of other things as well uh, the same techniques I'm going to show you in this video will apply there as well so uh, let's just look again at the sort of simple way to do this I'm just going to add an event handler for that button uh, just to get us on to uh, the secondary screen here so that'll just kind of start the start the situation here and then I'm going to once we're on the second screen I'm going to have an event handler for registering key press events or key down events on the second screen uh, and how these work is when a key is pushed down on the keyboard that will trigger this event handler and this event op or this event variable here will have information about what key was just pressed so what a lot of students do is well, they might have a couple of variables in their program and I'll pop those in here and those might be like x velocity and y velocity and those might start out at zero and then what students will do is uh, maybe set those to zero in here uh, let's see x velocity zero y velocity uh, and we don't actually even need to do that step yet so let's skip that uh, how, what they might do is sort, sort of if statement um, and I'll drag this in here and then some else ifs and they might say something like if the key that was just pressed is uh, for instance the up arrow key what that means is that this um, if the sprite is to move up or if the image is to move up on the screen then it should have a positive y velocity so they might say like something like y velocity equals five and then if the arrow key that was down uh, sorry I've misstepped here that should be a negative y velocity moving up on the screen is a negative uh, displacement so and then they might say like if the key that was pressed is the down arrow key then same sort of thing but instead of minus five plus five and then um, if the key that was pressed happened to be uh, the left arrow key and we type that like this whoops then uh, instead of y velocity if we want leftward motion on the screen that would be an x velocity uh, and to the left would be a negative amount and then I'm going to go to text you just so I can make this an else if you might say else if event.key is the last option is right then I want to have a positive so x velocity equals 5 positive 5 and so then to actually make it move so what we've done here is we had an, uh, an event listener an event handler that looks for key presses key down events in particular and if it's an up arrow key set this y velocity variable to negative 5 it's down arrow positive 5 left negative 5 for x right positive 5 for x and then you might do something like uh, set position at the very bottom here and I don't get rid of those last two parameters because I don't need to change the size of the image uh, I say image 1 and then maybe get x position of image 1 uh, and get y position of image 1 and I'll hide this so you can see that so image 1 image one and then what they might do is say something like plus x velocity here plus y velocity here 
when I have to block. Um, and so what this does effectively, and I'll run it just so you I'll hit the start button, just so you can see when I hold down the up arrow key, I get that. When I hold down down, I get that. When I hold down left, oh, something's wrong there. I get that. And when I hold down right, I get that. Um, let's see, what did, where did we go wrong there? Uh, yes, we should probably go ahead and reset our variables at the beginning here with x velocity is 0 at the beginning and y velocity is 0 at the beginning. Otherwise, these will remain whatever they just were. So I'll try that again. Up gets this, down gets this, right gets this, and left gets this behavior. So that all works, but if I try a combination, so I'm going to press up and right at the same time, I get this, which is just upward motion. If I press left and down at the same time, I get this, which is just down. But again, that kind of just depends on the order I press those keys. If I kind of spam up, right, up, right, up, right, then I get sort of diagonal movement. But you see a major limitation of this way of doing things is it's very hard to get like uh, smooth diagonal movement. Another limitation of this method is that the update rate is not consistent. So you're sort of at the mercy of how often the uh, key down event is is firing based on uh, your particular browser or whatever's going on there. Uh, and so this is not a known consistent rate at which the ship will move. So I've called these X velocity and Y velocity, but really what all they are is an amount of pixels to move the ship over uh, every time this event occurs. And I don't know how, like, I don't know if it's occurring every tenth of a second or every fiftieth of a second. I have no idea. So um, the better way to do this uses some of these same ideas as this. Uh, but it involves, it's a little bit more complicated, but you'll see it's actually much better in terms of uh, how well it works. So let's just go ahead and uh, I'll show you how to do that, and then I'll go back and explain why I've done what I've done. So what I'm going to do is actually have a list of uh, Boolean values, and I'm just going to call it keys. And in my list here, and I'm going to need one more thing, so I'll go to text mode. In my list here, I'm just going to, each of these are going to be Boolean values, so this they're just going to all start out at false. And what this list will represent is whether each of my movement keys are currently being held down or not. And I'm actually going to go ahead and put a comment in my code just to document it, just so that somebody else looking at my code will understand what this represents. Uh, or maybe myself later on down the road, if I'm uh, modifying this project, I'll want to know what I did uh, because I'm kind of define my, define my own convention here. Uh, so it's very useful to add a comment, add documentation to your code. Uh, so again, this is an optional step. Of course, the comments won't change anything about how the program works, but I just think it's, it's a good idea in this case. Uh, so keys is an array that represents whether a certain and I go to the next line, whoops, key is currently pressed. And then I'm going to make a list of correspondences. So I'm going to say keys at position zero corresponds to um, the, le the left arrow key. Whoops, that should be keys. Uh, keys at position uh, one corresponds to the right arrow key keys at position 2 corresponds to the up arrow key, and keys at position 3 corresponds to the down arrow key. And what I want to do, so I'll go back to blocks here just because I think it's a lot easier to see in the video. So here's my comment about my correspondences that I've just chosen arbitrarily. There's nothing special that makes the first entry left. I just chose that. That's my own choice. So what I'm going to do is use this timed loop structure. And I can put it in several places. I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the uh, the button one uh, click event handler because I want this timed loop to start when I leave. So if I'm in my app, as soon as I leave this home screen, I want this update, uh, update structure to begin. So I'm just going to drop that in there. This first number is 
how often you want this loop to run. And then the stuff inside of it is the code you want to run every time the loop fires. So I'm going to set that to 17 milliseconds. Um, and this is the really big advantage here is I know there's a consistent rate every 17 milliseconds that this uh, is going to happen and there's going to be an update to the screen. So I'll know that in advance how often the updates occur. And so you'll actually use timed loops or uh, intervals or set timeouts or commands like this. Um, whenever you're trying to implement movement of any kind in a game, in App Lab or in JavaScript in general, really. Uh, so I'm going to choose 17 milliseconds. That's a reasonable number because it's about 1 60th of a second. So it's not too fast that uh, most computers won't be able to keep up, but it's also not so slow that the movement's going to look choppy on the screen. So what I want to do in this timed loop every time the screen updates is I actually want, I'm going to pop this line of code that used to be in my key down event handler down here up here. So I want to update the position of this image every time this happens. And I also want to take out uh, this logic. So I'm going to pop these x velocity, y velocity equals zero up here. Uh, I want to pop out that logic because what these event handlers are going to do instead of all this stuff, all they're going to do is toggle on true or false whether or not each of these keys is currently being pressed. So let's see, I've got this key down event handler. This fires when a key on the keyboard is initially pressed down or if it's held down. Um, and what I want to do is if the up arrow key is pressed, for instance, if it's pressed down, I want to, I'm going to go to variables, I want to say my list of keys at position, well up was 2, so I'll say keys at position 2 equals true if the up arrow key is pressed. So I'm just going to copy this line of code and I'll fill these, oh, whoops, I'll fill these out appropriately here and here. And so let's see, down was keys at position 3, uh, left was keys at position 0 was the choice I made, and then that makes right keys at position 1. So this is for the key down case, and I'm actually just going to copy this entire event handler, and I'll paste it down here. Instead of key down, if a key up event is registered on this screen, then I want to set each of these to false. That means the key was released, and therefore it's no longer being held down. So these should all be false instead of true. And then what I have at the end of the day is event handlers that will toggle on true or false whether each of these keys is currently being held down. And so what I need in here then inside of my timed loop is something to update the values of x velocity and y, ve y velocity accordingly. So I can use an if statement for that purpose. Um, if I'll need uh, several things and I'll just do a, an else if here just to be consistent. So now I've got uh, this situation. And what I want to say is like if keys at position zero is true, uh, then, and I'll show you what that looks like, then what I want to do is say that the x velocity, so that means leftward motion, right? So if I'm moving to the left, the x velocity should be equal to whatever it was plus 5, and so I'll do text just so I can do a plus equals 5. And so let me show you what that looks like. So if keys at position 0 is currently being held down, if it's equal to true, add 5 to my x velocity variable. Uh, now again, I've been using 5 throughout this program just because it's like a reasonable speed, but of course 5 is, there's nothing special about this. If you want the thing to move slower, you'd make that a 3. If you want to make it move faster, you'd make it a 7, uh, and so on. I'll just stay with 5. Uh, and one other thing that I want to show you is this statement here, uh, while it works, is not very use, is not very common to see like uh, in programs. That's because keys at position zero is already corresponding to something that is either true or false as defined in my original array. Uh, so it doesn't really, it's not necessary to say does true equal true, because if this is true, then this whole expression will already be evaluating the true. So if you've got a Boolean variable, you don't need to compare it with true if it's already true when you want it to be true and if it's already false when you want it to be false. If I actually just delete this, it will have the same effect. If I say, if keys at position zero is true, is what that's effectively saying, then do this. And let's see, if keys at position one is true, 
then what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to say text mode just because it's hard to do the plus equals thing with the blocks. Well, if keys of position one is true, that's right rightward motion. So, uh, oh, I think I made an error here. So leftward motion should be a negative. So I'll do plus equals minus five, or if you want minus equals five, both of those will work. I'll just stick with plus equals minus five to make these all consistent. And I'll copy this down here. And I'll say if I've got rightward motion, I want the y velocity to get 5 added to it. Um, and then down here, these are going to be y instead of x. And that's going to be minus. That's going to be plus. So that will be y. Um, and then I want to say if keys at position 2 is true, that should be upward motion. So that's going to be a negative. And then lastly, if keys at position 3 is true, that's going to be downward motion. So that will be positive. Uh, and one other thing that I've actually made another little error here. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm trying to minimize those. But uh, each of these should really be independent if statements instead of part of, a, of an else if block. So here's, and let me show you what that looks like um, at the end of the day. Why do I have these extra spaces in here? Hold on. All right. So here's what this looks like at the end of the day. I've got this timed loop. I set the y velocity and x velocity to zero at the beginning of every every loop iteration, and then I say if keys at zero add negative five to the x velocity, if keys at one add positive five, two is y velocity plus negative five, three is y velocity plus positive five, and then I do the same step of setting the position of the image equal to whatever it was before plus the x velocity and whatever it was before for the y plus the y velocity. And now if I go back to my, 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 my app here and I run this code, I'll see when I, when I hold down the up arrow, I get a nice smooth movement up the screen. When I hold down the down arrow, same thing. If I hold down left, if I hold down right, and here's the magic. If I hold down the combination of down and right, I get ooh very nice smooth diagonal motion, right? And this is much, much better than the other method in terms of how crisp and consistent the motion on the screen is. So um, now that I've got that, there's lots of other things you can explore and uh, check out videos for me in the future. I might do some more on basics of making uh, games with animation and, and movement and stuff, but uh, I won't show you too much more about this now. I just want to take one more second to uh, take a look at how this all ends up working out. And one other thing as far as when the app's running, if, you hold, if you're holding down uh, left and then I hold down right, because of these are all independent if statements, it's possible for multiple of these to be true. So for instance, when I'm holding down right and then I also hold down left, you notice the ship stops. You'll have to trust that I'm doing that. Or you, I'll put a link to this example code in the description so you can check out for yourself that uh, this does work. But what's happened, the reason I wanted to make these each individual if statements is so that that behavior works. So if this was an if and then else if, uh, this one would get triggered and then this one would never even get checked down here. Uh, and that's because that's just the way the if, else if, else if structure works. So instead, since these are independent if statements, I'll check this one first. So if keys at zero is left, if the left arrow key is being pressed, okay, add negative five to the y x velocity, so it'll be negative five, and then separately check if the right arrow is currently being held down, then in that case, add five. So those two will cancel out. I'll get negative five plus five, and so my x velocity will end up at zero, and then down here I won't end up, at, I won't end up changing the x position of the ship. So that's that idea there, and that's why these are it should really be independent if statements because it's possible for multiple of these to be true at the same time, and I actually want that to be possible. I want that to be a, an allowed behavior. So uh, that's what I've got here is uh, all that stuff uh, to make movement on the screen in a very smooth and consistent way. Uh, so. I appreciate your attention in this video. I hope uh, this has been informative. I know a lot of people have been asking me questions about how to get movement like this down in App Lab. Uh, so I thought I'd make a relatively short video explaining explaining all that. And like I said, this there will be a link in the video description here uh, to this example on App Lab. I'll share it so that you can go ahead and take a look at this for yourself. Uh, one thing is this timed loop structure. If you go to control over here, 
once you leave this screen, so if you had like some sort of way to lose a game or uh, move on to another screen, you're going to want to call this stop time loop. So it's once you're no longer going to be on the screen, so if you're going to like a lose screen or back to the start screen, you don't want this time loop to keep running. So what you actually have to do is wherever, right after or right before you set, you change what screen it's on, you want to go ahead and do this stop time loop. Just drag that into your program somewhere, wherever you're changing the screen. Uh, at the same time, stop the time loop. Otherwise, you could get uh, some weird behavior happening. So yeah, that's been all in this video. Take a keep an eye out for a future one if you want to see more information on like maybe how to get our ship to shoot out a projectile or uh, maybe keep it on the screen. Because you notice right now I, I can just kind of fly off the screen and that's no good. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll think about making more videos like that in the future if I see that people are interested. Thanks for your attention. I'll catch you in the next one.